before you go through it, right, and as, you, as I went through it, I had to ha like mourn a lot of things. I mourned my own fertility. I mourned giving up a traditional life. You're not going to have this white picket fence with the husband or whatever and the three kids and blah, blah, blah. You know, it yeah. and then it all turns out fine. And you, you're like, okay, I'm going to build what I want and everything else will come around it. But I think when other people look from the outside at that, you know, even like if they would look at me now, they'd probably be like, oh, is that sad? Other parents in your kids' class, have they come up to you and asked like different things about what? So what's your story? <laughs> I think no, somebody you, actually I, came up to me and asked. That? Yeah. Parents never ask me. I, I feel, it's very weird because I almost feel like when I'm walking with Sophia and I meet like new moms, I always feel like I have to explain my story, which I don't know. I mean, and I say it in, it's a very happy story. I basically say, I mean, you know, I. I was engaged, I broke it off, I haven't, I didn't date anyone for a long time, I really wanted to be a mom, so I adopted Sophia. But when I tell the story, you know, I'm like, and I'm still looking for a husband, I kind of want to get that across, and I feel bad about wanting to get it across, but because it's still so new that as a single woman, you know, a heterosexual woman, you want to be a mom and you just do it on your own, that's a new concept. Oh, and when I tell my story, you know, the whole, like, okay, the quick one elevator speech, I'm a single mom, you know. and here's James, whatever, and a single mom by choice, right, right. not by divorce. I mean, I've had people, when they look at my belly, say, oh, you and your husband, da da da. And I, sometimes I just say, yeah, I'm not married. And I just let them deal with it. Right. <laughs> a lot of guys that I know that were dads said, it's, you know, you're crazy because you're giving up your freedom, you have such a fantastic life, just marry someone who already has kids. And I definitely got a lot of those kind of comments, mostly from guys, not from any women that no, I know. that. The men that I date, actually, when they hear my story, are actually like, oh my god, that must be, that's so great, it must, you know, must be so hard, that's what, I don't know, they just do, you know. Um, so my thing is this, like, if you can't rock my world, then don't rock my boat. And so he's got to be really something else. I, I had a, a bad dating experience. This is, so now my apartment, right, my bed is in the living room and Sophia has the room. So I went on one or two dates with this one guy and it was good, you know, it was like one of those like, this is okay, this is good, I, I gotta kinda get to know him more. But each of the dates, you know, you're paying the nanny $15 an hour. So he wasn't yeah. worth like a third date outside of the apartment for like, right. So I just, and he lives around the corner. So I'm like, for the third date, I'm like, you know what? I, I don't want Malou to stay late tonight. Why don't you? Why don't we just come over and, and you can order uh, Chinese food? He comes in, and now my bed is in the living room. So the date's like my bed's right there, and I'm not really into him. But it's just like, you know, he thinks, all right, I'm in. I'm in. <laughs> I'm like, this is not, yeah. This,